get your body into position. Right leg on the left leg, hands in your lap, right hand on top of the left hand. Your back straight, your eyes closed. And then get your mind into position as well. That's the harder part. But it's the essence of the meditation. Start out with thoughts of goodwill. First for yourself, to remind yourself why you're here. It's for true happiness. And you can express that wish in your heart. May I be truly happy. And you realize that it's not a selfish desire, because true happiness is something that comes from within. It doesn't take anything away from anyone else. It's not the case that when you have true happiness, you have to deprive other people of their happiness. It's actually it's more a gift for yourself and for the other people around you as well. It's like you're having a candle. Once your candle is lit, it provides brightness not only for you, but for the people around you as well. So the next thought is to think of the happiness of those around you, people first who are close to your heart. May they find true happiness, too. And then spread those thoughts out into ever-widening circles, people you know well and like, people you're more neutral about. people you don't like. That's sometimes the hard part of spreading goodwill, but you realize if you have limitations on your goodwill, it places a limitation on your own mind. So no matter how much other people have wronged you, you don't wish for anything evil to happen to them. You just hope that maybe they can find true happiness someday, and that way they'll stop wronging people. That's a spread thoughts of goodwill to people you don't even know. And not just people, all living beings of all kinds. East, west, north, south, above and below. Out to infinity. May they all find true happiness. The reason we spread thoughts of goodwill <coughs> is to provide a comfortable place for the mind comfortable thoughts for the mind. And the next step in bringing the mind into position is to make it comfortable with the body, because that's what you've got sitting here right now. And it's a long tradition in the Buddhist teachings. The mind can't find happiness, can't gain release from the issues of body and mind until, it really you, until you really understand the body and mind. So you've got to stay with them for long periods of time. And the point where they meet is at the breath. So bring your attention to the breath. When it comes in, know it's coming in. When it goes out, know that it's going out. And keep reminding yourself to stay there with the breath. It doesn't do any good to be with the breath for a few minutes and then wander off other places for half an hour and then come back for a minute or two and then wander off again. Because what you, the kind of knowledge you want for the sake of freedom is long, continuous knowledge that sees causes and effects. If you breathe in a certain way, how does it affect the mind? When you breathe in another way, how does it affect the mind? How does it affect the body? When you focus on the breath in a certain way, what does that do to the breath? How does the mind affect the body? How does the body affect the mind? Or to be more precise, what events in the mind affect events in the body? And what other events in the body have an effect on events in the mind? This, to see this, you have to be with the body and mind continually for long periods of time. Otherwise, your knowledge is like connect the dots. You have a dot here and a dot there. And you have to guess where the lines are between the two dots. And what is that guesswork based on, other than ignorance? What you want is to see the lines. 
stay with the body and mind with the breath long enough that the lines become perfectly clear, so there's no guesswork involved. So to stay with the breath, you have to make it comfortable. You can experiment with different rhythms of breathing. You can breathe in long and out long. Think of yourself as ventilating both the body and the mind. And then if long breathing feels uncomfortable, you can change it. You can make it shorter. You make the breath deeper or more shallow, heavier or lighter. Whatever rhythm or texture of breath feels good for the body right now. You might also have a sense of what the body needs right now. Sometimes when it's tired, it needs a rhythm of breathing that will give it more energy. When it's tense or irritable, you need a way of breathing that relaxes you, is soothing. So try to get a sense of what's just right for body and mind right now. And stick with the breath as your guide and as your, the basis of the skill that you're developing here. And the first level of the skill in the meditation is just to stay with the breath as long as you can. It requires mindfulness, alertness, and a quality that Buddha called ardency. In other words, you're really intent on in what you're doing. If there's no intentness, then mindfulness comes for a little while and then it goes away. You get relaxed a little bit and you're just going to drift off, which is not what you want. You're putting the mind into position. The Buddha once compared himself to a surgeon. And the kind of surgery he's doing is surgery on the mind, which is the most precise kind of surgery there is. You might make a comparison with when they do laser surgery on your eyes. Your head has to be in precisely the right position for the laser to cut at the right spot. And it's the same way with the Buddhist teachings. For the Dharma to really cut through your attachments, your mind has to be in the right position. So, be mindful to stay with the breath. That means you have to keep reminding yourself to be here. And then be alert. Watch how the breath really feels. Try to be as sensitive as you can and as honest as possible about what feels good and what doesn't feel good. This quality of honesty is very important in the practice. The Buddha once said the main requ prerequisite he had for taking on a student was that the student be honest. Give me an honest person, he said, someone who's no deceiver. And that means someone who doesn't deceive other people, at the same time not deceiving him or herself. And the Buddha said, I'll teach that person the Dharma. Because it's not just that the Buddha is the surgeon. You have to develop your own talents at surgery as well. Because it's not like the Buddha is going to come down and give you awakening. You take his Dharma, and then you apply it to your own mind. You have to develop your skills. And alertness is one of the main skills that helps cut through any deceptions in the mind, any ways the mind keeps things from itself or hides things from itself, or has a tendency not to pay attention to the details. Alertness is what keeps the meditation honest, what keeps it on track. And finally, there's the quality of ardency. In other words, when the mind is with the breath, you try to be really sensitive to the way the breath feels. Don't let anything escape your attention if it's related to the breath. Ardency also means that when you find that you've slipped off the breath, you bring it right back. You don't go peeking into other issues that present themselves. Because as you sit here, all kinds of other thoughts are going to come up, because that's the way the mind has been for a long time. This thought comes and you peek into it, see, where is this thought? Where will this thought take me? And then another thought comes, you peek into that. And it's not just sitting there for you to peek into. Once you peek into, you get, you get into it and it takes you off other places, off to the past, off to the future, away from the breath, away from the present. So you have to learn how to overcome that habit. Thoughts will present themselves, and it's 
the nature of the mind because you've got past karma that keeps having this effect on the mind. Your old habit of trying to find happiness by getting into these thoughts. Okay, you're going to change that habit. As soon as you realize you're off the breath, you bring the mind right back. No waiting around. And then try to pay extra careful attention to the breathing. Why did you slip off just now? What was wrong with the breath? What was wrong with the mind? Rather than tracing back the causes in the past, just look into the breath and the mind in the future. Okay, where are they not in alignment? And do what you can to bring them back into alignment. Once you've got these three qualities, mindfulness, alertness, and ardency, those are the basis for the skill that you're developing. That way you become your own surgeon. You can take the Dharma, which is often compared to a knife, so you can cut away your attachments. The attachments that keep the mind tied down. We're here for the sake of liberation, for the sake of freedom. And no matter how much other people may be keeping us oppressed or keeping us tied down, finally the real liberation is liberation from our own entanglements, from our own attachments. So get the mind into precise position and let it stay there for a long time so you can really see what's going on. So then you can apply that knife with skill and precision, right where it really needs to make the cut. Some people complain that they've read the Dharma for years and years and still can't seem to cut through their attachments. Well, that's because they've got the knife, but their mind isn't in position. So it just cuts here and cuts there, and it's not right in the right spot. You've got to get the mind in position, right here at the present, alert, mindful, and aware, ardent. So as soon as you see where there's unnecessary suffering, and you can see the craving that goes along with that suffering. You can cut right through the craving. Cut right through the ignorance. And then you'll see that this, the Buddha's surgery really does make a big difference in the mind. Because when you cut at the right spot, it cuts those things away for good. And whatever attachments were causing suffering, whatever ignorance was causing the diseases of the mind, greed, anger, and delusion, the ignorance can be gone for good. That's the good news of the Buddhist teaching. Because even though there are things in the world that change and are impermanent, the effect that the Dharma can have on the mind when it's used with precision is once and for all. The suffering can be gone for once and for all. So, do your best to master this skill. Do your best to get the mind in position so that you can apply that skill with precision. When the Buddha talks about knowing for yourself, this is the way he recommends you go about it. It's not just sitting around and deciding that you like or dislike a particular teaching. It's seeing where it's properly applied. And that's when you really come to appreciate the power of the Dharma. And 